All right, we got George up next. And uh, yeah, good luck, George. <laughs> Yeah, George is taking on a very challenging uh, set of slides here, so uh, I think it's going to be either, well, it's going to be awesome either way. <laughs> uh, okay. so are, are you ready? Have I instilled you? I am ready. Okay. Stop it. You are? Yeah. I'm going to go heckle for back. Hi, I'm George Fairbanks, and I'm going to teach you a technique so that you can think more clearly. I'm going to do that in six minutes. You often have to talk to somebody, and they're trying to teach you something, and it's clear to them, but not clear to you. Uh, so you want to think clearly and ask the right questions then, not two months later when you realize that there was actually some fuzziness in your thinking. So here's one thing that I do. Uh, I get the person that knows something to uh, write down a scenario, or I help them write down a scenario, uh, and we're going to build this up over the course of this example. In this case, uh, we're trying to figure out how libraries work, and we show that we've got uh, this patron, Pat, uh, who's joining the New York Public Library. And so this is something that everyone can engage in. Now, behind the scenes, what I'm doing, in my mind, is I'm building a mental model of what's happening here. And so I notice that there's an action going on, which is joining the library. And so over in the corner, I create a list of all the actions that are occurring, in this case, joining the library. This is a specific action of Pat joining the library, and the other one is generally it's possible to join the library. Now, similarly, you can do the same thing with the nouns. So notice that we've got Pat here in the scenario. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in the red box that corresponds to Pat. Uh, and we also say that Pat is a particular kind of thing, in this case, a patron. So there's the general case, the specific one, and the scenario. And what I'm doing is I'm stitching them together, building this model from the scenario. Now, this also, uh, we do the same thing for the rest of the nouns that are in here. So, for example, I notice that there's a, a library, and I link the library and Pat together in the instances, and I say that actually there's libraries and patrons and show how they relate to each other. Uh, I've added the multiplicities on there as uh, an exercise for the reader. Uh, the next step in the scenario is that, uh, uh, that Pat is going to search uh, the titles in the library for books about fish. And uh, so that's the next thing. And I notice that there's topics. So I add a nature topic and fish topic as a couple examples. And the general idea is that there's a, a topic out there. OK? Um, you'll notice that there's some formatting going on. And that's to keep me honest. So I underline the things that correspond to the actions over there on the right. And when they're nouns, I capitalize them. OK? Uh, notice we're going to search for titles. So we added titles down here. And we added uh, Moby Dick as an example of a book that we would uh, match. The third step in the scenario here is that Pat is going to check out copy number two of Moby Dick, which is the title. Okay? And you can see the model is getting more sophisticated as I go through these. Uh, in the example, I have added a couple copies in the library. And I've added a copy as a copy of a title, i.e. book. And I've linked all those things together. What you'll notice here, though, is that there's really a state that comes before the scenario even starts, which is what was true before uh, Pat joined the library. In this case, it was that uh, copy one, that's a bug, it should say copy two, uh, was already checked in to the library. So the final step in the scenario here is that Pat returns copy two of Moby Dick. Moby Dick and this is what our full model looks like. We've got four actions. Uh, we've got a snapshot of a, picture, a point in time with Pat as a patron in the library, copies in Moby Dick, and a generalization of that. And I'm using this to keep everything clear in my head and uh, understand how this domain works that I've just learned about. Now, one thing that's interesting about the model that I'm building is that it's not all possible things that can happen. It's, in fact, a minimally sufficient uh, model that explains the, the data that I was talking about there, the scenario that we're building up. So we've got four uh, actions, and those happen to be the types that they operate on. I also have an information model. People call it different things. Um, and it's a minimally sufficient uh, model for explaining the scenario. Uh, the compactness of this is important because you guys have all seen very large uh, diagrams that talk about state. Uh, you can look at your database models as they're gigantic. This has the opposite quality. It's minimally sufficient to explain what's going on. But remember that any one of these things, so for example, this class diagram or a list of actions, is not the model itself. The model is the, the interconnections in your brain about how all these things work together and how the time dimension in the scenario uh, makes them all animate. So in order to reinforce that, let's see what the world looks like before this step and after this step. 
So you can see up here that Pat is not a patron of the library before, but afterwards we've added a line in our diagram to link those two, and that's a result of this action occurring, Pat joining the New York City Library. In the second step, you see that Pat searches for titles about fish. Uh, and in this case, there's no change in the before state and the after state. Now, if you're a company really involved with logging, uh, that would be a problem because you don't see any change in the model. But for searches, in general, that's fine. My model didn't change. Now, when we take a look at the third step, uh, Pat checks out copy number two of Moby Dick. This is a problem because what we've got is a, what seems like a major transformation. There should be a transformation in the model, but I don't see any change in before and after. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to think about that and try and fix it. Remember, all we had done before was mechanically look at the, the scenario and draw a model of it. It doesn't mean everything is necessarily in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to invent something that we weren't told about yet uh, called a loan. We're going to link up the loan to the copy and to the patron. And so now you can see before the checkout and after the checkout, what's happened is a loan has been created that represents uh, what has just changed there. So let's take a look at our model again. Now we've got everything hooked up. We've got the loan here. Here's the generalization of it. And we're starting to see how everything goes together. Um, this is a great way for me to help debug my thinking. And what's more, even more importantly to me, is that you can start to ask much more interesting questions now that you have this model. So for example, you might notice that a copy can have many loans, and so you might say to yourself, how do I know what the current loan is? Or that a patron can have lots of loans. Well, how many loans can they have simultaneously? These are questions that might not have occurred to you if you only had the raw uh, text of your scenario. All right. Well, that's it. Hopefully this is a, uh, it's a nice, easy technique that will help you uh, learn to ask people questions and uh, get all this stuff straight in your head. Well, well done, sir.